A dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. A dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination and hard work. So we've got an exciting couple of weeks. We have. It's more work in the walled garden, getting this sorted. Yep, we've got some fantastic friends coming over. Yeah. So it's going to make for a, an interesting couple of weeks, seeing what we can get done out here now. Definitely, and to, obviously they're coming over to help create a, a beautiful design, mm -hmm. a formal garden, which we will implement over the next 20 years. <laughs> or 30. <laughs> it's not that, they've got the knowledge, they know what plants will work here. Yeah, like, and we don't I know have any. they've researched like what the, the climate's like here and, and what we can grow here. We wouldn't be that great with making it as amazing as they're hopefully going to. So. Yeah, 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 that'd be good. But before they arrive, we need to get all of the garden as much as a blank canvas as we can. So we've got all of the tree roots out. Yeah. Um, and then the next stage is... But it's not just tree roots. I've no. been going around this for the last two years. Mm -hmm. And even as of like today, I'm still pulling bramble root balls out and I want rid of them. They are the bane mm -hmm. of my life. Mm -hmm. um, we've still got quite a lot of grass growing in clumps and I want to get that out as well. So what we'll do is we'll rotivate it. We'll chain arrow it to level it all back off again. We'll rotivate it again. We'll chain arrow it and we'll keep repeating that process till we have got it is purely just mud. And the reason obviously we have to keep on turning it over rather than doing like a like a no dig or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. We we have to because it's it's been left for so long, so yeah, the root balls are it, quite far down. There's nothing here that that should be here really. It's just no. all been left yeah. here so long. Yeah, and, and, it's and I'm really not kidding you. Time. When I say bramble root balls this big, mm -hmm. they yeah. are like literally the size of footballs. Mm -hmm. Some of them that are still coming out now. Yeah. So if we don't get rid of them within a year, we're going to be doing yeah, the same thing again. We're just constantly doing so, it, aren't we? We yeah. want this, this is it, this is it going to be done and this is it going to be the formal garden so we want to make sure it's done absolutely properly now. Yeah. So we'll get work now with the rotavator and get the tractor out mm -hmm. and start having a little drive around. Yeah. Are yep. you having a go? I might do. <laughs> I might be busy with the camera. <laughs> Terry, Terry and the tractor. <laughs> Gracie and the tractor, you can go around if you yeah, want. I don't know, I don't <laughs> trust myself. No. There's a big drop there, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Right. right, come on, get this we'll get tractor started. going. Come on then.
So cracking on, we work here in the walled garden and it's the perfect time to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, which is EcoFlow. We've worked with EcoFlow loads and, and we do genuinely love them. I've got the new River Pro 2 here, which is an amazing piece of kit. Um, we've got electrics in the shadow sorted, so it means that we don't use them as much in there now. So we use them for, for getting about and we're, when we're out and about doing work and stuff. And this one with it being so lightweight, it weighs like seven and a half kilo. We can just pick it up, take it anywhere we want to, and we can run most of the devices on it. It's got a, a 1.6 kilowatt, it's got a, a boosted output. So there's not a lot that we can't actually use on it. I think even in the home, it powers up to 80% of the devices that we'd need. You can use it as an emergency backup, whether it be to, to keep the lights on, to um, keep your fish tank going if there's a power cut, anything at all, they're absolutely ideal. And you wouldn't believe that the switch over from um, your power going off to this kicking in, it's 0.3 of a microsecond. So you wouldn't even notice it. It's literally quicker than the blink of an eye. So it, the, the product itself, it's just superb. They're so durable and, and, and lightweight. Not just that, you can charge them in so many different ways as well. So if I know that I'm going to be out here on the morning, I can stick it on charge while I'm in the shower getting ready. You can use solar power, which if we leave it out here during the day, we can power it and use it at the same time and not lose anything of it. And again, that helps improve our carbon footprint because we're literally drawing it straight from the sun. You can power it with USB. You can power it from a car charger, or you can just plug it in at the mains if you're planning to go away with it and take it away for the weekend. Um, I, I can't recommend them highly enough. I know that we're going to be able to use this product for the next 10 years. Um, it's got 3,000 charges and it'll still be safe, it'll still be good to use. I think at the end of 3,000 charges, full charges, it's still going to have 80% of the capacity when you bought it new. There's nothing like that on the market. They're so proud of that. They'll give you a minimum five year guarantee on it, which again, it, it's confidence in the product. You know you're going to buy something that's, that's going to last you and they're confident in it and we're confident enough to bring it to you as well. The link will be in the description. Check out, they've always got some fantastic offers on and like I say, you will not be disappointed with any of their products. So, you might recognize where we are again. We've come out to the Brock Hunt that we came to where we got that beautiful table from that we love and the small table from the 401 suite. We've come to have a proper look at the urns that we like, the, the big ones and the small ones, and to look at obviously the prices of them as well. We didn't really, well, we weren't looking for stuff like that when we came, so we didn't really pay any attention to the actual size of them or the price of them. So we'll have a little look now, see where we, uh, see if there's any other bits, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some bits sorted for the garden. So these are the big ends that we like which to be honest uh, stunning even nicer seeing them here so we're just waiting on a price for the urns aren't we just a little price hopefully pity price and pity free well i didn't even notice this last time we were here and it's beautiful isn't it yeah they are lovely i don't know if we'd use it with the arch on but just to use them as obelisks i think they'd be beautiful Jim there isn't four, but three would still be useful. So have we got the price? Yes, we have the price on these two bad boys. These are 800 quid each, 1600 for the pair. I did ask if you'd do a deal, he said that is the deal. Yeah. Fine. So, happy with that. The arch and trellis arch, got that bang on, 1500 euro. Yeah. And the square ones are 240 each, the stone ones. So. And that was it, he wasn't going to do a no, deal? No, well he said that is a deal. Yeah, we said there should be 280 each, so is where it is. It is where it is. We'll keep on looking. Yeah, we'll find something. Yeah. So I'm here with Karen and Shane, and with them too, they've been conspiring with Terry. And we now finally have our, our garden plans, and we have yeah. some idea what it's going to look like. Yeah, it's looking great. No, thank you. Yeah, well, we're doing more of a whole formal garden on this upper terrace the walled garden so mm -hmm. we're doing a some some alternative boxwood hedge it's not boxwood we're using a lanicera to do those these will be in the corners yeah so they're in there we'll they're have in there them. and yep. then up here as well so we'll be using some for the upper terrace yep and then uh 
dent, we're going to be doing a, a, a gray hedge around the circle. So, so that'll these be, will be a different here, sort of No, no, no. Nope. All around them. Down Just below. down here. Yeah, yeah. Down there and there. Look good. So, and then, so it'll be uh, Tucrium, which is silver, and then uh, Barberry, which is purple there. And then we're going to be using a lot of purple and white and some silver tones and greens in the color scheme so what uh, really pop yeah and i like the symmetry so you'll have a yeah. path going straight down the center yeah, and then nice. everything will pretty much mirror each other either side pretty as much, much as we can as much as we can yeah, yeah. So there is some difference in the in the light so uh, some plants will be different on this wall yeah as opposed to that wall because that's a very hot wall yeah, over there. Lots over yeah. and then uh yeah, pretty much flanking. Uh, it's pretty much mirrored wherever I can. So that looks yeah. amazing. Yeah, thanks. And water features. Uh, there'll be a water feature up here. Just right here, Shane. Yeah. Yep. And um, that's a half circle with a little geyser, and then mirrored down below. So on the uh, other side as well, there'll be a down water below. feature down. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Look really nice. And then we've got some of the dark purples I've introduced, kind of, um, and a lot of climbing roses, a lot of roses in the garden. To really, they'll love this heat. And they'll love the walled garden. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be perfect. Yeah, you yeah. pick plants that are really uh, drought tolerant and love sun and heat tolerant. Yes. <laughs> it gets hot. <laughs> Karen's so. been searching all the nurseries in the area, so yes. we kind of have a good idea where we're going and where we can get stuff as well. So it's been a really yeah. good, had a good time doing it as well. Yes, I, we got so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least we know all of this is possible, and um, yeah, we can do it and start getting on with it now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excited. So we've had our first trip to the garden centre. I think it's been quite productive. Yeah, yeah, found some of, good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I think you were worried about what we'd be able to find here as well, um, whether we'd be able to get what we want and also the quantities of what we want as well. So it's, I think it's been nice to do that recon and actually see what's available yeah. in the area. And we've come back and there's a little bit of colour here already. <laughs> so you just have to tell me what we've got here because I, I, I'm not great with these. Yeah, yeah. I will learn. Yeah. Well, <laughs> There was some real welcome surprises, which was good because we got some of the Pittosporum. This is a, a good evergreen shrub. And I was worried that it wasn't going to be hardy enough here, but I saw some growing just down the road, so it looked good. And it stays a real dark purple black color. This is a county, uh, this is Tom Thumb, excuse me, it's a smaller leaf. And uh, that'll be a foundation plant, so that'll be evergreen and give a real contrast to some of the real light colors that we have uh, going in. Where would they, where that's would gonna, That's gonna be up top, right near the, uh, there'll be one on each side here. They're on the terrace. On the terrace, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then I also got this, I was excited about this. This is a new uh, cultivar of uh, choicea, it's commonly called Mexican orange, but ever, another evergreen. It's a white flower. This one's very prolific, smaller, smaller leaf, and it's got fragrant foliage. You were yeah. commenting that you smelled the foliage. Yeah, I smelled it as we were taking it out. You could smell it. It smells beautiful. Yeah, that's, so that's pretty exciting. So I got those, again, foundation plants. I'm trying to really focus on those, and those are going to flank these uh, entrances that leave the uh, upper terrace there. And then <clears throat> this is a clamoring, Kind of vining shrub. This is Trechlospermum 
jasminoides, which has, it's commonly called night flowering jasmine. Very fragrant white flowers, evergreen. And that's going to be trained <coughs> on this wall over here. So that'll, that'll give an evergreen and flowering uh, wall covering on nice. that stone wall. Um, what's the hell of this yellow one? Yeah. <laughs> it's just pop on what this. Well, yeah, like the yellow like one that. is candy. So <laughs> <laughs> that's an acacia, sometimes called mimosa, evergreen, fast growing small tree. That, Winter blooming. That's yeah. what's key. And uh, it's going to be out front by the gates. So um, and then I was talking, we can actually, I was going to show you how to propagate from seed for that. So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly. You said so, soon yeah. we had to boil the seeds. So yeah. Put them in boiling water overnight. Put boiling water overnight on the seeds and then you plant them. They come up pretty well. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then some starts on lavender. So that can go in between the hydrangeas you guys planted on the circular wall. Lovely. Yeah. And then we'll be lots I, more lavender. I like the color of them as well. That was a blue lavender, yes. wasn't it? So the yes. leaves are a kind of blue as well. Yes. So mm -hmm. Really nice contrast to what's already in there. So. And the eucalyptus for flower arranging and good smells. And yeah. Again, another beautiful smell of one. And what are they? You've got tree peonies here yes. as well. I'm really interested to see these. Yeah. The flowers look absolutely beautiful. There's tree peonies. I mean, which, you know, they have an irregular structure. They get tall, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, but the flowers when they bloom, I mean, it's just insane. They Beautiful. look like crepe paper flowers, <laughs> but and great color. So those are going to be kind of a open ornament. Again, flanking the stairs and then repeated yeah. down below as and well. Where are you with the these in? One. Where are these going in relation to the plan down the stairs? Uh, there's one on each side over here, go cool. and here. And then I'm repeating them down on the on the uh, walled garden. All right, yeah. Down yeah. below, so the pink ones go down there, the purple ones up here. Beautiful. So, yeah. and then we did this. some beautiful uh, purple roses somewhere. Yeah, where are the roses? There's one just here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So, and that's that's going to be a prominent feature on the top of the stairs. Uh, on the terrace next yeah. to the stairs there. So, and they are, the color on them are absolutely stunning. Yeah, now we're looking for a climber to match. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah we're looking. I want to do uh, several climbing roses. So there's a dark purple climbing rose that I'm trying to find for right on this side of the terrace. Cool. And then a couple others on the other side. So. I suppose we better go and get this started then. Come on then. Okay.
So we've got an idea of what the garden's actually going to look like. We have. So Shane and Karen have left us a, like a rough plan of how the garden is going to be laid out. Yeah. So we can get an idea of obviously where stuff's going to be and what we can get sorted. But it's going to be amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I think he's again he's we. It's been given a brief of what we can do and what we need and what we want it to look like. Yeah. And it's exactly what really we're wanting. It is, it's perfect. So coming down up to from the main shuttle where we are, you'll come down to the like the south terrace right the way along here. Um and it's like brilliant the way it sort of links both of them in together as well, isn't yeah, it? It mirrors each other so the top here and onto the section below, as you're looking down on it or as you're looking up to it, it'll tie in yeah it'll lead on to each other lead on. Yeah. and it's not just that we're going to be growing up the chateau walls as well yeah so the colors and the vibrancy it'll bring to like to the back of the chateau yeah i think it'll be really nice to be able to look from down there up at it yeah it'll be really good well the way it's laid out after wanting quite a lot of like formal low grown hedging mm -hmm. so all of these dark parts are going to be all of the formal hedging to yeah. sort of mask it off so along here it'll create like a, a barrier yeah. so you don't fall down yeah, from yeah. the top level to the bottom level. So it won't be like an actual fence, it's going to be more of just a hedging yeah, screen. Walkway. We'll have walkways that you can walk between that'll stop you going beyond that sort of thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, down there. Then just off the centre circus here, we're going to have these other circles and they're going to be mimic top and bottom and they're just going to be little sort of waterfalls mm -hmm. so they're only going to have like a small little fountain on the top of each of them yeah to give you like the sound of and just that ambience it's that sound isn't it yeah. and the feeling of being somewhere formal yeah so you'll have like one on the top and then we'll have one on the bottom mm -hmm. and they'll mimic each other yeah on both sides and then i'll bring you down to obviously the, the main part of the formal garden which you'll have paths walking right through around the perimeter a bit and then you can walk through the centres and this will be a mixture of grass and gravel. Yep. Um, and we've got some fantastic trees going in as well, which yep. are really going to give it that little bit of just grandeur. height. Yeah. Yeah. So these will be pencil cypresses in the centre, just to give it a bit of height and a bit of like formality and grandeur with it. And they'll be matched here, I think, as well, won't they? Yeah, I think we've got one here and then we've got the um, like an urn planter or something like that over on this side. Yep. And then we're undecided yet in the centre part if to have some sort of like urn um, sculpture there as well or if to have nice big topiaries. Yeah. These, are, these aren't fully finished, these are our ideas right now, it's kind of like where yeah. we're leading to so it is likely to change between yeah. like, us actually doing it. Doing it, yeah. When Shane and Karen came they came just to get an idea of the space, um, how we use it, the sizes, mm -hmm. so the plans will slightly change a little bit compared to this yeah. um, to work with what we've got and what we need and what plants we can get and then Shane will do a, a proper plan um, a colorized plan which will be like a paint by numbers pretty much because we need it yeah <laughs> Where, so this plant goes here this plant goes there yeah so we can get sorted we've already got some exciting ideas of what that's going to look like as well so we've seen the colors and that at the plants garden centers and it's been really good to to get out and see all that though and, and understand it yeah 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 and then all along the wall that we're going to be building in the next couple of weeks we're going to have loads of beautiful like colorful flowers mm -hmm. all in the purples the whites the greens yeah and then that'll mimic on this other wall over here as well yeah so yeah but not only that he also created the design for the front a design for the front formal garden as well so see this is coming in the new entrance the formal hedging around each side to lead you in and then where we'll create the fountains with the hedging around that and we're obviously trying to look for some beautiful big urns <laughs> to go there yeah so not easier said than done yeah in well, our price range i was going to say within our budget <laughs> yeah so yeah so these are what we're going to be working on like throughout this year to try and implement and get sorted and we'll keep you updated yeah so it's been amazing having Karen and Shane over and we can't thank them enough. Their expertise and just having them here and, and helping us in, in the ways that they have, you've been amazing guys, so thank you so much. Yeah, it has been absolutely amazing to, to have you here and just to, to help out with everything. The understanding, I think, like I say, we're not idiots when it comes to plants, but we've got no, nowhere near the knowledge that these two have. These are, when, when it comes to expertise, yeah, yeah. we feel like we've had a proper 
lesson yeah, and understanding of what this garden's going to be and how to care for it and mm -hmm. the conversations yeah. that we've been able to have but I think have been really good and helpful. Yeah, it's been brilliant. But thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this show with our amazing plans now for the garden, well which excited. we can start implementing. And we will see you in the next show. Bye. <clears throat>